Hey, what's up? Okay, so in the last video, I think we did uh, gravitational potential energy. In this video, we're going to do elastic potential energy, which uh, you'll see that written as uh, EPE, elastic potential energy. And that's just, uh, there we go, EPE, or elastic potential energy. And that's uh, the kind of energy that you might get if uh, um, if you pull or push on a string or rubber, right? Because, and also, no, uh, just a key point that I want to mention is that whether you push on a spring or pull on a spring, it's resisting whatever uh, you're doing. So you have to do work to either s stretch something or to push it together, like a spring or whatever. Um, so one formula that I always show when I'm teaching this is that I show the kinetic energy formula, which... Uh, if you don't remember that, go to my last kinetic energy video, and I uh, I show where this comes from. It's actually not uh, not too hard to really derive, hopefully. Um, but uh, the elastic potential energy equation is extremely similar, and uh, I want you to remember that the um, uh, if this is the kinetic energy equation. Remember, um, kinetic energy kind of depends on, it turns out to de that it depends on momentum, which the momentum is mass times velocity, um, and it, it basically each of these turns out to actually be the, uh, the antiderivative of the, uh, the moment, the momentum function and the force function, but I'm not going to get into all that. Uh, sorry if I just confused you, but there, just you can just ignore basically everything I just said unless you're taking uh, calculus, um, which I doubt you are. Anyway, oh, I'm sorry, I just wrote an M there. So the elastic potential energy is one half times k times x squared. So it's extremely similar. It's just a bit different, right? Because this became this became a k, this became an x. And this became the elastic potential energy. And what does this formula mean? Well, let's say we have a spring. Spring. I thought that was pretty good, considering I'm doing this with my mouth. Um, one half, you g I'm not going to really explain, because that gets into calculus. But uh, the x squared part. First, let's look at that. x refers to how far you're pushing it in or pulling it out. Right? So you can either uh, push a spring in or pull it out. And actually, I want you to kind of... Um, go at some point next time you're in your bathroom, take that toilet paper roll holder, and um, if, if it's one of the ones where you can take the spring out, try pulling it one inch, and then try pushing it one inch, and you'll see that it actually takes the same energy. And uh, that's just because uh, if you're pulling it, say, back one inch, or negative x squared, that's the same as if you're pushing it forward, as if you're uh, pushing it one inch. Or which is x squared, because right, the negative times the negative is positive, so this is equal. So whether you're pushing, um, well, yeah, whether you're pushing or pulling on the spring or the rubber or whatever, you're doing the same amount of work. Um, so this is squared, right? So this is why uh, the more you pull on a spring, the harder it gets to pull, and it's why, um, or at least the more you pull on a spring, the more work you have to do. Um, to keep pulling it at the same rate, uh, or the more you push on something, the harder it gets to keep on pushing it. Uh, so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense, right? Because um, my best example would be literally a, a spring. If any of you have ever had a spring before, um, play like ever been any or like toyed with it a little bit, uh, you can pull it a bit, and then the farther you pull it, it gets harder and harder and harder, and that's because if you pull it one inch, um, that looks like Lynn, which I think is a name. I hate if my name is Lynn, just saying. Anyway, uh, if you pull it one inch, you have to do some amount of work, right? Some of this work, it takes some amount of elastic potential energy, it takes some amount of energy to, um, say, pull it one inch. If you're, if you pull it two inches, well, then this right here becomes, if x is 1, then 2 inches would be 2x, right? So 2x squared uh, is 4x squared, actually. Um, so as it turns out, um, 
if you if it's uh, if you pull it two inches, you're doing four times as much work. If you pull it three inches, you're doing nine times as much work. And that's why the farther you pull it, the harder and harder and harder it gets to keep pulling it. So uh, hopefully that makes a bit of sense. Um, and then the k, the k that k constant, uh, also should seem, um, at least I don't think it should be uh, too hard to really get a grasp of. And let me uh, show you why. Let's see. Let's use my mad paint skizzles right here. That is some that that is some like Picasso level drawing stuff right there. So let's say we've got like two tubes. Whoops. Two tubes. Uh, I'm going to make one of them big eraser. I'm going to make one of them pink. Right, one of them pink. So, whoop. okay. So one of them is pink, one of them is green. Uh, let's say that this pink one is made out of uh, rubber. So rubber. Oops. And let's say that the green one is made out of steel. Well, if you think about it, this steel is going to take more work to stretch the same distance. So if you're stretching both of these by, um, if you're stretching them x distance, or compressing them, because we said it's the same, So, if you, but we'll say if you're stretching them x distance, if you're pulling at x distance, well, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a lot more work, work here, you're going to have to use a lot more energy to stretch the steel than you would have to use to stretch the rubber. Right? That should be obvious. I mean, you've stretched rubber before, and hopefully you have noticed that you also cannot stretch steel. Um, so as it turns, so this K refers to, uh, it's specific to the material. So for steel, it'd be really, really high, because it, re there's, it requires a lot of work to stretch steel. For rubber, or for something like really stretchy, like maybe silly putty, silly putty, it would be almost zero. Or not almost zero, but it'd be a very, very small number because it doesn't take much work to stretch silly putty. Um, okay, so that's really all there is to elastic potential energy. All I'm telling you, all these kinetic energy and elastic potential energy, they sound all physics-y and they sound kind of difficult. Um, but really, uh, there's not much to them. Like, even with uh, some of the kinematics equations, they can give you some challenging stuff, especially with some of the two-dimensional uh, projectile motion and crap like that. But uh, with this, there's, uh, there's three variables. So either they're going to give you the energy and, uh, and the displacement and tell you to solve for the constant, or maybe they'll tell you the spring constant and how far it's stretched, and they'll ask you um, how much work you have to put into it. But really, it's just putting in a couple variables and solving a simple algebraic equation. So um, again, it's, uh, it's really not that, uh, not really that bad to to uh, d to do the, the actual math behind it, and uh, or the actual like computations, and uh, one thing, one other thing that uh, they'll always mention is something called the Hooke's law, and that's that the force uh, required to stretch something is equal and opposite to uh, that constant times x, and basically what this means is that um, if you want to say Say the constant is just convenient. Say the constant is one. So say the constant is one. So we can almost just get rid of that constant. Um, so the constant's one, right? One. And let's say that we want to compress uh, a spring by one inch. And maybe because of the constant, we need to use one pound of force to do that. Or maybe maybe because the constant, just depending on what the constant is. Actually, let's say the constant's two. Two. So um, then, if we want to compress it one inch, we need two pounds of force. Then, if we want to compress it two inches, we need four pounds of force. So all this says is that there's a direct relationship between force and um, how far you want to push it along with the uh, the constant. And the negative sign just means that um, if you're it, that's a terrible spring, but it means that if you if your force is going in this direction. Well, then it's going to be pushing back in that direction. That's 
all that that really means right there. That, uh, that, that stuff. So that's just Hooke's Law. So there's a three minute summary of Hooke's Law. Hooke's Law! Shout Law, because it's important and because it's capitalized. Ha! Double underline. Beat that. So, um, basically, if you want to stretch it t twice as far, it's going to take twice as, twice as much force. It's going to take four times as much energy, but twice as much force. And for those of you who know anything about calculus, um, if you take the antiderivative with respect to d, um, so let's write down our function f s. This, if you're not in calculus, completely ignore it. You can go, you can skip the video pretty much. Um, so if you're in calculus, you'll see force is this, uh, and then we did what? Um, oh yeah, right, negative k times x. Okay, so let's take the antiderivative of both sides. Fun stuff. Um, and we're going to take that with respect to d. So I'm going to say dd. I know that sounds kind of weird, but... Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's actually going to be dx. It's just going to be our normal x, because we're going to be using that... Um, throw that dx in there. Sorry, I probably should have put that in there. So each of these, we're taking the integral kind of with respect to x, right? Um, and here, if fs, we're saying that it's just a constant, right? Because it's just integral with respect to uh, d, with respect to, d, to x. So we get f times x, or f times our displacement, is equal, or, no, well, stretchy f, uh, is equal to, again, negative k is a constant, and uh, what do we do with the x here? Well, we uh, remember we make it x squared, and then we divide by that power, so that's over 2. And uh, what's the force times the displacement? Force times distance, or rather times displacement, equals work. So here we have that the work done is equal to, oh, look at that. We get the negative kinetic... Uh, well, the, the, there are some, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the negative coefficient times x squared over 2. And uh, we shouldn't have gotten that negative. Um, that was probably just my mistake somewhere with uh, the direction of the vector or whatever. So that's not actually there. But that's kind of where that comes from. And you'll see that if you, uh, up here with the kinetic energy, if you think of momentum, uh, which is, I think, P, if you say that momentum equals mass times velocity, which it does, you can trust me on that, momentum equals mass times velocity, same thing here, only you're looking at it with respect to, um, did I do this wrong? Yeah, I did. Uh, no, I did it right. Momentum equals mass times velocity. And, uh, if you're going to take the integral with respect to V, uh, you end up getting the, uh, momentum times the velocity, which... It, it works out. I mean, you can uh, do... I'm going to tell you to do it on your own, but it uh, it does work. I've done it before. I just don't... That explanation probably didn't help. But uh, for those of you in calculus, hopefully this kind of showed you a little bit of where that comes from. For those of you not in calculus, hopefully this explained Hooke's Law en law enough for you, and hopefully you can remember that if you have to pull, twi pull a spring twice as far, you have to pull with four times as much energy. But if you're pulling it twice as far you're using only twice as much force. So that's what you remember. Four times as much energy, but twice as much force. So uh, hopefully that helped. Um, my next video is... Uh, I might do a little bit of mechanical energy, but I'm probably not going to start that yet, because uh, mechanical energy is... Um, eh, I probably will. It's a, it's a fast video, but uh, I'll see you then.